Friends, the grace, mercy, and peace of Jesus Christ be with your spirit on this sixth Sunday of Lent as we continue our Lenten pilgrimage, Believe. We reflect on how Jesus calms the troubled hearts of his disciples on the sixth Sunday of Lent. Listen to a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 4. Don't let your hearts be troubled. You believe God, don't you? Believe me. There's plenty of room for you in my Father's home. If that weren't so, would I have told you that I'm on my way to get a room ready for you? And if I'm on my way to get your room ready, I'll come back and get you so you can live where I live. And you already know the road I'm taking. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of the gospel. A member of the church I pastored called and set up an appointment with me, himself, his wife, and two daughters. They all came in and sat around the conference table. Then he spoke. Pastor, I'm dying of cancer and do not have much time to live. I want to talk about my funeral with you, with my family by me, so when my time comes, everything will be ready. More importantly, I've taught my family how to live with dignity. Now I want to show them how to die with dignity. Friends, this man was at peace with God and wanted to get his temple affairs in order before dying. But before he died, and while he could, he led his family through difficult conversations to prepare them for his departure. Jesus' hour of betrayal, suffering, and death on the cross was at hand. He gets his affairs in order before his departure by gathering his disciples for a private and intimate supper. A main purpose of the gathering was to prepare the disciples for what lay ahead so they would not stumble or fall away from their faith in Him and His life-giving promise. I've learned much over the years from John's Gospel about pastoral care by reflecting on Jesus' ministry with His disciples during His Last Supper. First, Jesus demonstrates His love for the disciples by washing their feet as a humble act of care and service to them. Second, he tells them the unvarnished truth about their fellowship's brokenness and their faith's weakness. And yet knowing this, Jesus commands them to love each other as he has loved them because only a love like his can hold them together when all hell breaks loose. Third, Jesus helps the disciples look to tomorrow to see hope beyond the grief of the crucifixion. He recognizes the disciples' anxiety about the present dangers and unknown future, but he does not dwell on the crucifixion and simply says he was going away for a while, but would return to receive them so that they could be where he is. It was comforting for the disciples to know that even though he was leaving, he was not abandoning them. On the contrary, he would prepare a place for them. Jesus takes care of their present needs as well as their future and promises that their pain will turn to joy. Fourth, Jesus welcomes and answers the disciples' questions. Thomas asks about the pathway to God's place and Philip asks to see God. Jesus assures them that following him will lead them to God's dwelling place. Moreover, they had already seen and known God because they had seen and known God's Son, Jesus himself, God in the flesh. Jesus' answers strengthened their faith, which kept them together and from stumbling and falling away. Fifth, Jesus gives the disciples a mission while they wait for His return. They were to continue His work of leading others to believe in Him and have life in His name that is abundant and eternal. As the disciples did this work, God would give them what they asked for in Jesus' name to succeed in their mission. Sixth, Jesus promises the disciples spiritual presence, power, and provision. The Holy Spirit would be sent or would come to accompany comfort and dwell in them, keep them connected to Jesus, help them withstand persecution for, for their beliefs, and guide them in all truth about God. And seven, Jesus shares his inner peace with them, bids them to be courageous, and prays to God for their protection. The disciples could not bear at that moment all that Jesus was saying, but in time, and with the help of the Holy Spirit, 
It would remember Jesus' words and actions and receive spiritual strength to endure until they were again reunited with their Lord in the place He had prepared for them as promised. Let us pray. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. See you Easter Sunday when we reflect on Jesus' encounter with the disciples on the evening of the resurrection. Peace.